Um, bonjour. Merci à l'université um, d'avoir organisé Cool11. Um, Aujourd'hui, je parle des verbes classificats 3 uh, dans le sud-est, une langue CNN uh, de Papouasie-Nouvelle-Guinée. Um, and I'm talking in English, I'm sorry, from now on. Um, so today I'm going to talk about classificatory verbs in Sudest. Um, I'll start by giving some basic background information about Sudest, the speakers and the corpus I'm working with. Um, and then I'll talk very, very briefly about uh, classificatory verbs cross-linguistically before jumping into the classificatory verbs in Sudest. And I'll finish off with some musings on uh, the regional context and their potential origins. Um, so the Sudest speakers, um, it's spoken on Vanathina, um, also known as Sudest, or Tagula sometimes, and Yena. Um, and they're in the far southeast of Milan Bay province in, Sud uh, in um, Papua New Guinea. So we're going west from the previous presentation. And there are about 4,000 speakers of it as of the 2011 census. Um, it's part of the Nimoa Sudest family. Um, there's just the two languages. Uh, and in turn, they're part of the Papuan tip cluster, which are Western Oceanic languages. Um, and the Papuan tip cluster, just as a reminder, are known for features that are uh, attributed to contact with Papuan languages, like OV clause order and um, post positions. Sudest is an anomaly within the Papuan tip cluster and is still um, canonic oceanic SVO, and it has a mix of prepositions and post positions. And it also has um, numeral classifiers it likes doing classification to a certain degree. Um, so the current description is based on the Pamela Central dialect, um, and you can see it's where all these dots are around there on the north coast. Um, and it's based on a text corp a, a corpus of text that I collected for my PhD with, you know, narratives and all those sorts of texts. It's also got um, some stimuli tasks that I've listed here that were quite useful for um, investigating classificatory verbs. Um, there's also been some previous work by SIL um, in the central dialect as well, but on the south coast, um, and Malcolm has done um, a reg oh, there you are, sorry, has also um, compiled a sketch grammar from their work. Um, so some of this will be familiar for you, maybe, though it was a while ago. Yeah. Um, and so classificatory verbs um, in the typological literature, I won't go into discussions on verbal classifiers, really. Um, there is some contention within typology, but I'm for now following Eichenwald, who um, uh, describes two sorts of classificatory verbs cross-linguistically. Um, the first type categorizes the S or O argument referent based according to sort of inherent properties that are language specific, things like animacy, shape, arrangement. And they're very famous from North American languages, particularly Athabascan languages. Um, then the second type classify the argument referent of SO based on orientation in space. So things like standing, sitting, lying, hanging, um, and often linked properties. So standing things are often tall and strong. Um, and they're quite widespread in a variety of Papuan language families, and also in a few uh, North American languages. Um, the somewhat exciting thing, though I can be corrected, is that there appear to be no verbal classifiers in Austronesian languages, full stop, according to Eichenwald, and what I've researched, and more recently, I see eyebrows raising, that could be exciting, um, and more recently, Kalaski also doesn't mention any, but yes, again. Um, so onto the Sudest paradigm. Um, they make a seven-way distinction based on properties of the object referent. Um, some classes also make a plural uh, singular distinction, so, so showing a bit of verbal number, and in total there are ten verbs. Um, as independent verbs, they mean get, um, get from somewhere, um, if there's any sort of locative adjunct. And they also occur in a range of multi-verb constructions that encode events of handling. Um, and I'm calling them multi-verb constructions because some stems wouldn't really hold up to being defined as serial verbs because they can't function independently. Um, again, they were first noted, or object classifying morphemes were first noted by Anderson and Anderson um, in Sudest. Um, so I'll go through the paradigm now. 
Um, the first category is the rigid category, and it's uh, used with, uh, there's a plural singular distinction, bun and wall, and it's used with object reference like stones and sticks and knives and trees um, and rigid containers, but also it's a bit of a catch-all for other things that are somewhat rigid, but humans and most animals, um, and a few abstract nouns listed there, or they're the attested ones. Um, there's a flexible class, which is used, again, it's got a plural singular distinction, and it's used with um, things like cloth and leaves and rope, um, and also empty baskets and the like, um, and also arms, body parts, or just that as a body part, sorry, arms and hands. Um, the third group are container and contents, or if you're referring to contained contents as well, you use them, and also multi-part items. So if I fill up my cup with water or I've got a full basket, but I won't use the rigid or the flexible categories, I'll be using the container and contents category. Um, there's also at least one abstract for a noun there, dance. Um, and then there's a, um, a tool with a handle verb, and that's just for singular. Um, and that's used with um, axes, adzes and hammers. But there does appear to be some variation by age. Younger people don't use it in the corpus, but they will um, use it in elicitation. Um, there's a boat category as well that's used when referring to handling and getting boats. And there's just a singular for that. And then there's also a fire category, you know, used for when you send a kid off to get a fire from a neighbouring house. Um, to light the cooking fire. And then there's a general unspecified um, plural that you can use instead of those top three, ban, lang, and bigi. Um, also, I should mention that um, at least two of those verbs have, um, have presumably related um, verbs of handling still in use in Sudest, um, and I'll go into that later on. But they're li and ban, um, so jumping into some examples, here are some classificatory verbs in, um, you know, independent constructions where they're functioning as get verbs, um, and you can see the distinction here. The rigid singular is used when we're talking about one stone, and the rigid plural is used wombana varu varu when we've got more than one stone. Um, also, it's frequently uh, third person singular objects, um, enclitics are zero, so they're not visible, but plural third person object and clitics are often dropped. Um, they're not obligatory anywhere, but they're often especially dropped with the plural classificatory verbs. Um, so as I said, they combine with a range of handling, um, uh, they, they combine with verbs for a range of handling multiverb constructions. The first type is with intransitive directional, um, directional verbs. Uh, they combine with, um, they're attested with 15 different intransitive directional verbs that sort of specify directionality and path. Um, I've listed some of them there, and as you can see, in three we've just got the directional verb joga, go back, so what what am I in joga remba, the witch went back to the village, but in four we have wo joga, and it's talking about somebody um, bringing back a relative um, so it's transitive. Um, the next sort of multiverb construction they occur in is with um, transitive handling verbs. Um, they're attested with 26 verbs and the majority of these um, can function completely fine and there's not really any difference between if there's a classificatory verb there or not. Um, oh, sorry. Oh, scheiße, echt. Ich hab das... I'm so sorry. There we go. Anyway. Um, so, back to here. If, if you look at nine, we've got um, Vigia, so they give, and they give hot food to them. And then here in ten, we've got Huyengegia, um, so they give you fire, and you could actually take Yenge out, and it would be completely fine. You just sometimes will lose the content that the classificatory verb can contribute to the thing, say if it's an empty or full container or plural or singular, and it's not specified anywhere else. Um, they also occur, this is um, with input constructions, and there are four stems um, that make put cons uh, that are used to express just basic putting in Sudest. Um, they appear to be used m 
for the most part interchangeably, which I'll get into on the next slide. Um, and they're not expressing, um, in these constructions, they're not expressing, you know, two sub-events are getting and are pushing. As we can see in 10, they're expressing, you know, we've got first Lolo Iwal, the person gets the stone, now you water and puts it. Um, so again, like the other handling constructions, it's just a single action. Um, so, he um, so here you can see that the four stems, meaning put, um, can be used interchangeably. These are all from different speakers describing the same stimulus video. Um, and when you look at the text data as well, individual speakers vary their usage. It doesn't seem to be related to age or gender, or even I have some speakers from a slightly different dialect and it's not related to that either. Um, there are some differences, for example, kura here only occurs with the rigid singular wo um, and only nda and ban um, can occur, um, you can, um, only they can occur with, um, instead of a classificatory verb, you can put um, just a manner specific handling verb like drop or throw um, or pour instead. Um, and there's differences in frequency, but they are, yeah, they all mean put. Um, uh, there's, I do have time for this. Um, they also occur in a construction um, that's one of only two ditransitive constructions found in the corpus or um, in my data. Um, and this construction means give with a stem ve. Again, like the put stems, it can't function independently. Um, and interestingly, the um, classificatory verb here and the object enclitic don't refer to the same argument. The classificatory verb um, agrees with the theme. Um, we can see in 13, I leave Engi, so I give my relatives the cloth. Li is a flexible singular item. And Gi is plural third person, so lo boda boda, my relatives. Um, and you can see that in the one below as well. It's also homophonous with the reciprocal um, morpheme um, there. Um, oh, wow. I think I've been talking quite fast. Um, okay, so regional context and potential origins. Um, it's in the most closely related language, Nimoa. They make a distinction for plural and singular, get. You can see here, iho and iyomo. Um, but it doesn't matter what the object referent has in terms of other qualities. It can, it's just one of the two verbs. Um, and they're also used in a put construction, get put. Um, but there's not really any available data apart from that, the little bits I collected on Nimoa for the moment. So um, also you can find, you know, suppletive number sets in put verbs in Sobai, which is the westernmost oceanic language spoken in Indonesia. And I mean, a uh, saliba in Milan Bay has a suppletive set for give, um, but you don't find the classificatory part, just the number. Um, you also find um, Sudest is spoken on an island na neighbouring Rossel Island, which is where Yele is spoken, which is the only Papuan language spoken in the province, and it's an isolate that's famous for being very unusual. Um, and uh, Levinson and Brown um, describe a covert system of nominal classification by verb. Um, so that's, um, you know, mirrors um, Brinvald's description of classificatory verbs, which she doesn't class as verb, a nominal classification. Anyway, so in Yele, you have a three-way distinction for standing, sitting, and hanging entities in um, an existential verb paradigm. So it stands, it hangs, and also for um, put and take. Um, and so there is that in the neighbouring language, but semantically it's not um, like the Sudest um, paradigm and also I can't really see potentially any borrowings, it just by looking at it at least. Um, and it also, yeah, it aligns with Eichenwald's type two classificatory verbs, whereas Sudest is more with her first type. Um, and also these are more similar to mainland Papua New Guinea classificatory verbs in the semantics at least. Um, 
So as I mentioned, at least two of the classificatory verbs, li and ban, are historically likely related to verbs still in usage, li put, uh, sorry, pull, and ban put. Um, and we know from mainland PNG languages, um, at least from Imondo and some other Waris languages, that verbal classifier affixes have grammaticalized from handling verbs, so that is a very potential origin. Um, but there's not really any um, evidence I've found from the documentation on related oceanic languages like Misima, and there's nothing on Nimoa um, where I can look at cross-linguistic information, and I have no diachronic data either, so that's just a thought for the moment. Um, so, Sudest has a classificatory verb paradigm that appears to be like Eichenwald's type A classificatory verbs. They mean get as independent verbs and are very, um, play a very important role in um, multiverb constructions expressing handling events. Um, and I haven't been able to find them in other oceanic languages and for the moment their origins are, you know, a little bit fuzzy. I go you. Thanks, Harriet, for your talk. Mm -hmm. There is any question? Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, very interesting. You said um, uh, there were several verbs that showed a singular plural distinction. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I was sort of uh, yeah, aware of this distinction in, in the language I uh, work on, and then I found out that the semantic distinction actually is between two objects and more than two objects, mm -hmm. which came quite as a surprise, and I discovered this by accident, and uh, it seemed to, at least for verbs of carrying, the basic yeah. distinction. So you can carry uh, two things in your two hands, yeah. but for more things you need something different, uh, a yeah. different posture somehow. Yeah, yeah, and totally, there's obviously the, that's, that's really interesting, and I'll grab the name of that language. Um, and obviously there's the literature on carry verbs in oceanic, which is quite big. And, you know, they make manner distinctions that can be related to type of object. Um, but these aren't carry verbs. Um, and there are separate carry verbs in the language. Um, but they're not actually really used very much. Most um, transport um, expressions um, take classificatory verbs. Thank you very much. I, 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 um, the, the, the term classificatory verbs uh, reminded me also of, uh, of uh, a different kind of classification that was documented in some Kanak languages of New Caledonia mm. by Françoise Rivière and Jean-Claude Rivière a few years ago. And that's more the manner kind of. So, yeah. so the, it was sort of morphologization of, I think, mostly body parts. So do something. Yep. So there's a whole set of verbs. So do with your teeth. Mm -hmm. You know, things you can yeah. do with your teeth or with your foot or with your hand. Yeah, so they're super widespread in um, Papua and Tip languages as well. Okay. Um, and they have the confusing name classificatory prefixes in, yeah, in lots of the literature. Um, Sudest has a set of those. And I'm calling them manner of causation prefixes so that we can uh, not get too confused. But yeah, they have ones that specify at m the manner and often entail a specific body part. So yeah, teeth, hands, fingers, striking... Um, like, you know, cutting um, and that sort of thing. So, yeah, they, they don't occur as frequently as one might think with um, the classificatory verbs in the corpus, but they can co-occur as well. So you can specify sort of instrument manner and um, theme qualities. Yeah, you can just touch something with your hand and you would have yeah, yeah, I can say I'm one or um, which would be just specifying that I'm getting it with my hands. Um, yeah, though this, I mean, actually, I can't remember what, Mobile phones are classed as it <laughs> sort of varies, probably. Mm. <coughs> Thanks for a really interesting talk, Harriet. Um, I had a question about the um, gaps in your first paradigm when you were showing us the different kinds of classificatory verbs mm. and how they've got the singular and plural yeah. um, variants. Do you um, do you have any comments on the fact that some of these verbs don't have a plural um, I mean variant and, and where that fits into the larger story? As you say, you know, you're interested in where yeah. do these come from, what are they doing? Yeah. I mean, yeah. potentially it's sort of just um, 
real world pragmatic base that you're not usually getting more than one tool at a time or one more boat or you know you're not holding multiple um, burning sticks you know you're just going to somebody's house to get to get one so so that is my only thought on that Yeah, 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 so you could actually have a look at how they're being used as well, perhaps, yeah, and see where the singular forms are being used in things like yeah. the containers with contents and the mm -hmm. objects with multiple parts and see whether there's some kind of pragmatic difference. Yeah. 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 And I definitely, definitely want to build the corpus as well so I can further tease it out. Mm -hmm. um, thanks for your talk. Um, I think an example... 15 or 16, if you could go mm -hmm. back, you had an object suffix on one of these verbs. Um, 15, you say. Um, yeah, like this. Yeah. Uh, so in number 16, you have an object suffix on the on the plural mm -hmm. uh, verb. On, uh, on 16, yeah. Yeah. What would happen if you did that with number 15? Would it be ungrammatical? Um, okay, so this is this is from Nimoa. Um, but oh, right, yeah. like Sudes, the, um, I just haven't, Nimoa has a zero third person. So it's, it's, you know, you can't see it. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, when I, when I write it out, I'll put a zero morpheme just to tell you if there's no lexical object, but that's just to, you know, flag that it's transitive. Um, and yet here it's, according to the Nimoan speakers I spoke to, it's optional whether you put the plural, plural I mean, third person. If you did, put mm. the object suffix yeah. on, like, before in number 15, yeah, if I put the plural on there. Would it be like unrecognized or ungrammatical? Or would it be like I think so. That's that's the case in Sudesh. I, I assume it's the case in, um, yeah, I assume it's the case in Nimoan, but I didn't actually test that in Nimoan. Um, because I, yeah. 